So in most cases, EV drivers are very friendly, well-meaning, enthusiastic people. But if you're public charging and you're on your own, they can be a little bit intimidating without meaning to. So uh, I saw this note on Facebook that someone put. Uh, they said, just putting this note out there in case it might resonate with anyone. I appreciate everyone can be in a rush, frustrated when all chargers at a station are in use, but I've encountered some really uncomfortable behaviour since getting my EV. As a woman on my own sat in my car, it makes me uncomfortable having strangers walk up to the car in the dark, peering in my window to read my charge. You may not mean it, but it can be intimidating when you pace up and down a few inches away from my door or stand at my bonnet, staring at me through the windscreen for 15 minutes. My tipping point tonight was someone trying to open my car door to ask me a question. I dread charging my car at night now. Like I said, it's probably frustration, but respect how others might feel. So that sounds pretty terrifying, and it's a situation that I imagine quite a lot of people have been in. So um, I just wanted to get my wife's opinion of it. Well, that's why I never want to charge when we go anywhere. You do, you do it. Because first of all, I don't like people. So I'm not, oh yeah, I have an EV. Oh yeah, let's talk about EVs. No, I don't care. I don't want to talk to you. I don't even want to say what my charge is. Don't bother me. So I'm not good in that situation. So, until there will be enough charges and no one bothers me while I'm charging, I'm not charging. I'm not traveling on my own with an electric car. Well, how many times have you charged public charging? I just when I went to Norfolk uh, by myself, but then I had Cheshi as well, you know, with me. Yeah. And that's better when I'm, you know, because she does the talking if there needs be. Yeah. But I'm not a talkative person. I don't want to tell you. I don't want to be friendly. I want to be in my car, charge and get away. And I don't want you to come and tell me. So I understand what this woman is saying. Where did you find this uh, thing anyway? It was on the Facebook, on a Facebook group for EV owners. But she wanted to be anonymous. I did ask her if I could tweet it, and she, but she wanted to be anonymous because she didn't want to make too much of a big deal out of it. But woman or man, I understand that at night with the woman there's more danger. But it's also a situation even for normal men that don't want to talk, or even during the day. All this friendliness, the, oh, how much charge do you have? But why do I have to go through that? I don't. I wouldn't buy an EV if that was the only way for me to travel, to talk about, to talk to all these people. I wouldn't. Yeah. I would travel with a petrol car, well, so no one bothers me. I put the petrol and I go on my way, and I don't have to talk to anyone. The problem is there are not enough charges, so there has to be a limitation. Maybe the. Um, like when here in the UK there was shortage of petrol, what did they do at the petrol station? Some people put a limit of ten pounds. You can only put the petrol ten pounds. So that's so here you put the you have a, since there are not enough charges until there are enough charges, there is lack of of charges. So here. So you need to put. A limit, say, when there is only one charger, put a limit of 60%. When there is two chargers, put a limit of 70 When there is three, put a limit of 80%. Don't end only for electric cars, not for hybrid as well. They should say hybrid, not allowed. Okay, so it's a lot of people don't know this, but it, it's very, very slow to charge most cars from 80% up to 100, like ridiculously slow. In the old e Nero, it was 44 minutes up to 80%, but you would be another 40 minutes just getting from 80 to 100%, something like that. So it's a ridiculous amount of time. So this is part of the problem. Um, if, you are, if you're driving and you're desperate for the charge, right, and then someone is on a charger and you can see that they're past that 80% point and they, you know they're gonna be sat there for ages, 
you do get a bit frustrated, and that's what this person's alluding to. Of course, you but, get frustrated. No one wants to wait for ages when you know when there's a long queue. But also, the person that is charging should be aware that if they're using the only charger for miles, the only one, there is going to be a queue. You have to go through that, the people peering, because people don't like to wait. In this time and age, people want everything immediately. They don't want to wait. Imagine if they tell you at the petrol station that there's only 50 pounds left of petrol. And then you get the person in front of you the charges with the 50 pound you're gonna get pissed off you're gonna so the person in front of you should have the common sense to charge to put 10 15 because they see that other people need it but population today are we selfish or are we generous with other people we don't give a shit we just think about ourselves most people so what can you expect you cannot just trust the person that is charging to have the common sense to say, okay, you know, I have 70%, I'm gonna go now. Most of, most people would have that common sense, well, especially here in England. Most EV you know, drivers, most yes. EV drivers here know that, they um, would have that even sense. even if you don't know that it's slow from 80 to 100, we know that there are limited charges a lot of the time. And but no, man, not all people know. No, because because. Isabel, for instance, our friend Isabel, right? She was, she was, I always use her as a case study. She was in Cambridge and Cambridge, there are very few chargers at the moment. And she, so she was at one shell garage that had charger, one charger, and there was a Tesla driver there. And it was very late. She had her children in the back. One of them was crying. And this Tesla driver said, no, I'm charging to 100%. And that's, really? a, that's especially, yeah. And that's especially bad because Teslas can charge at their superchargers, right? But... That's crazy. But I think it's because a lot of people now use Onto, companies like Onto, and you get free charging with Shell, right? And a couple of other people. So I think he was but using that free charging. If and you see that there's a woman with children waiting and it's late at night, you must be a C word if you don't get the F away. I know, I know. Because because what I think maybe he didn't have home charging and that's that was his charge stop. But... Again, because it's so slow, from 80 to 100%, it's just... It is Even shitty. for Tesla? Yeah, for any EV. Our, our Ionic is very quick, but it still slows down at the, at the end. So, it, so, it's a question of etiquette. If you are the driver, just be aware that from 80% to 100, it's slower. And if you're occupying the one charger that's there, then perhaps drive on and charge somewhere else if you've got a long journey because that's quicker than waiting for that 80 to 100%. If you're, in the, if you're sat in the car, drive somewhere else and charge if you have to get somewhere else, because it's quicker than waiting. That's the thing. Of course, there aren't many charge stops around, yeah, if and you could argue uh, that, yeah. well, you've got a charge. Once you've got a charge, you think, I'm holding on to this bugger. But still, um, uh, that's, one, that's, that's one thing. But also, if you are someone that's waiting for a charger, just be mindful that I, I do think that if you want to charge, if you have to charge to 100%, then you kind of feel free. Because if we're in this leaf, if we had this leaf with what its tiny... What did you tiny... say? I don't understand. I don't follow. What do you mean feel free? Well, I, no, I think, I think if someone has to charge to 100%, then don't bother the person. If they really no. have to. If they really have to. If there is if a queue, no, but if you've you got... can. What do you mean you have to? Yeah, you because, don't have to. But if you've got a... It's kind of your right, though, isn't it? It's, it's a, you could argue it's a little bit... Bad, yes, but okay, it's your right. It's your right, but you're gonna piss the person that is behind you that has ten percent, especially if they have to be somewhere, especially if it's late at night. My point, my point is that um, if you're in a if you're in a car like a Leaf, this car, what is like sixty miles on the motorway or something like that, you might need to charge to hundred percent. Well, to get to the next stop. Well, just to get to your destination. But who would? Who would buy a leaf to travel long? Well, we have. We did. Back in the old days, we did. Because it's a, it's a cheap, decent car, and maybe you've just got to do one long distance a year or something. But you then know? you get prepared the, of the situation. When you buy a car, they should tell you, say, look, there are not many charges. Get prepared. Do this. Do that when you get there, blah, blah, blah. They should give you an instruction manual on how to behave at a charger because there are not many charges. 
or they should put instructions on the charger itself not just how to use it but you know like be mindful of the people behind you you know waiting for be mindful yeah, if you reach 80 percent and you're able to move on do so yeah but also but also they should put even maybe a screen that says how much charge the car has not that they come and see I your know. charger it should show on the charger so people don't many of them do yeah many of them do oh, really? this, yeah many of them do this one doesn't ah, but okay. so i don't know where this lady was charging but if it was a motorway one actually they do they do say so there was i think they say but even so, at um, night if the guy comes and you know hangs around obviously you're going to be uncomfortable but not because only of the safety issue i mean you know, I would be uncomfortable anyway that someone is around me. And the guy that opened this the her door... Well, you report them to the police. You report yeah. them to the police yeah. because what the f***? What... I mean, this charger here has got an overstay, so we get charged £10 if you're, if you're here more than an hour. So that's a good way of stopping people from oh, sitting right. too long at the charger. Um, some chargers, yeah, I, I do wonder whether they should just stop at 85% or something, if there aren't enough of them. Um, and and there should be a way of there should be a way that someone doesn't have to bother anyone else. There should be a way of like when you have to cross the lines, the pedestrian lines, that someone comes, presses a button and says, I'm waiting. Capish? Well like a sort of a, a queuing. Yes, a queuing system, system yeah. I'm waiting. And then of and then maybe it regulates the time that the person says, Okay, someone is waiting. Your charge is gonna be stopped at seventy percent. And if many people press the button, uh, the charge is going to be stopped at 50%. Or, you know, depending on the car, also, I don't know if they can read how much range the car has. You know, like the Leaf, for example, maybe needs to charge until 80. Because otherwise you'll just go 20 miles. Yeah. And, and you're back. Uh, but yeah, you know, there should be a way. This, I wouldn't buy an EV. No, I wouldn't. You do this for us, and that's why we have AV. If it was just me traveling the country, never. I would never get an AV. How I would just uh, put the petrol. It's but things are improving, though. Because, like, in fact, where when we went to the motorway services recently at Thurrock, there were just three chargers there, and there was someone who was asking me, you know, when, you, when are you going to be ready? When are you going to be ready? And there was a queue of three cars. But actually there, they're building a big hub just next to it and there's going to be 16 charges or something like that and that's so, good and that's going to be good because you shouldn't have to bother anyone else no one should feel pressured exactly no one should feel guilty for charging to 100 i think and um but it's just this situation we're in at the moment we're in this transitionary period yeah um but this is but why petrol stations but can are you good. imagine when everyone has an ev there will never be enough charges oh they will yeah they will well, because most, most people the, charge at the, home don't they the times uh, will be uh, shorter, I guess, when, you know, yeah. the cars will become better, time to charge will become shorter, and then it'll be good. Again, taking that, taking our Ionic, for instance, you know, on a good charger, on a f very fast charger, that's 18 minutes, that takes to 80%. So you, there, charge, off you go. And um, so it will improve, but there are still cars that charge very slow, of course. But once we've got lots of chargers everywhere, it will be fine. Yes, and, and it so, will be. And so Shell have just opened a, uh, just a charging hub, beautiful charging hub, and that's like a petrol station. And you've got a steward walking around, checking if everyone's okay. A good screen at the front that tells you which ones are occupied, and that's great. And that's, you know, so that's a nice, clear, well-lit 24, it's open 24-7 with a shop. You would feel safe going there. So petrol station places are great. A lot of chargers, unfortunately, are tucked away in car parks that are badly lit, and you would be terrified. Man or woman, you'd be terrified, probably, of charging in a place like that. So, you know, it'd be good. Yeah. It would be good if there's a there's this app called ZapMap where you find a charger. It would be good if they told you which ones are safe. If there was a filter that's like, you know, safe space, you know, CCTV, or whether it's got someone walking around there, or, you know, well lit. All these kind of things. It would be good to know that. Um, yeah, surely beforehand. there are reviews, you know. You'd have to scroll through a lot of reviews. I feel like ah. it'd be good if there was a filter. If we just, if we could establish which charges, you could argue would be safe. But it's getting better. Like you know, as I say, Shell are doing these, this nice hub, um, Grid Server doing these beautiful hubs everywhere, and motorway services will get better. But at the moment, it's a bit 
if it's yeah so at the moment if we people are brave if they have to travel the country They're well just unless they have a tesla okay because if you have a tesla you go to the well, these massive apart from the idiot i was talking about earlier but you've got, you've got all these superchargers you what 16 32 chargers whatever it is plug in you don't have to talk to anyone else if you don't want to and it's easy and, and then you know so are are, are those frequent what what do you mean are they are, are there a lot of them you yes mean? yeah the superchargers quite quite a few of them yeah, yeah what do you mean a few good. all over the country yeah loads i don't know the numbers but there are loads yeah mm. and teslas have big batteries so but didn't they say that everyone can use them now not yet but it, it might happen yeah yeah but i mean another thing so I, here's a thought i had what if on the charger you said i want to charge to i want to charge to 85 percent and then it would tell you how long that's going to take. So you as a driver would know, okay, well, that's going to take a while. Maybe I'll charge a bit less or whatever. Um, but then at least everyone would be able to look at it and they would see your intention. It would say, yep, yeah, I'm going to charge up to 85%. I'll be here a while. But, don't don't but bother me. No, but, you know, the person then would see that and would knock on the window and say excuse me are you sure you need to charge until 85 percent because i have a you know a car full of but children crying and i need to charge can you charge until uh, it's just gonna be like that and you well have to then, accept it then and if an you etiquette. buy an ev you gotta etiquette. you gotta accept it that's an etiquette thing isn't it you just shouldn't do that well you should well you, uh, I, would, you I, would. Wouldn't, I wouldn't do that i would I tell you what i do uh, what i do when i go to a charger if there's someone else that i can see is waiting i'll say all right mate uh you know, I'm going to be here about 10 minutes. And they say, okay, fine. You know, and then window goes back up. Exactly. Um, so you have to be prepared to socialize. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and talk to people. And that's why I would never buy one. Yeah, but you you don't, you don't public unless, charge anyway. No, you it's, charge it's, at home exactly. all the time. unless I would not buy one if I had to travel frequently. Well, or, or, you, get a, or you get a Tesla. Or I get a Tesla. Yeah. Allora, get a Tesla e basta. I don't want a Tesla. Uh, I don't want a Tesla. You don't want a Tesla. I don't want a Tesla because they're all ugly, so... <laughs> the drivers or the cars? I, I... The cars are ridiculous, apart from Model X. But Model X uh, is too big. No, Model 3 is... I think Model 3 is nice. No, it's Model a, 3, a, Model Y, all the looking, other one, that just a, long and boring. It's a decent looking Just car. Model X is good, but then it's too expensive and too big. Otherwise, I would buy it if they make a small version of that. They might come out with a little hatchback kind of thing, a smaller one that you mm. might like, actually. I like but, um, yeah. Anyway, this is one of those issues we're in a weird time at the moment where it's still a kind of... Uh, we're still getting to know how things work. We're still learning things, like with etiquette. A lot of us oldie, older EV drivers, as in people that have been driving a while, they know all this stuff. But I think a lot of, there are so many EV drivers now, they're all frustrated. They don't know what the hell they're doing. They used to go into a petrol station char and then filling up to 100, because that's what you do generally at a petrol station. No. Well, anyway. I, did, I always did. I always did 100. Yeah. Well, you're the only, what, you're 1% of the population. No. Really? Yes, you are. Who, who charges to the full? Only if you're doing a, the longest trip ever. So we're talking about fuel, right? Who... Um, see, start, see, yeah. I mean, excuse, yeah. who puts the petrol to the maximum? If you're doing a long, long trip, then yes, you would, then you don't want to stop it. But otherwise... I always did, because you can't fill up petrol at home, so you might as well get it all... No, no one does that. Okay, maybe it's just me. But anyway, I think a lot of people do, and, and maybe that's part of the problem. And the fact that dealers are rubbish, dealer, car dealers are often are rubbish, they don't go through anything, um, or people get them from onto or whatever, and... You know, they're just, they're, it's a learning experience for everyone and um, it will improve and it is improving, <clears throat> but at the moment it's a bit of a nightmare. And yes, even I, even I would, would be a little bit concerned, I think, uh, charging at night in some places. It's not that the EV people are, you know, scary or whatever. Well, they're, they're, you do hear some reports, only a, only a few, but you do get some reports of people that are a bit, you know, angry. I mean, when we when we charged when we charged in Thurrock, right? There was someone who was who was quite agitated and saying, "Well, you know, how long are you going to be?" And, you know, well, I I can charge my leaf here, can't I? And I said, "You can't. It doesn't do two cars at once." And yeah, he said, "Well, what's, I'm, what's the, what's the you know, point of and that?" And he said, "Well, I'm going to try it." I said, "It's not going to work," you know. And it was all getting like this, you know. But a lot of people are going to watch this and they're going to say, "Oh, I don't want an EV." But most, fair enough. No, but but 
most of the time, the vast majority of the time, this is not an issue. Yeah. Mr. EV will make uh, another video and tell you when it's safe to buy an EV. Ah, but this is the thing that it's never, you can never just say, oh, it's safe. Ah, you know. No, ah, well, if there are uh, enough, like that hub that you say that they're opening, yeah. and if they open a uh, hundred hubs like that, uh, then it will be safe. So another car packed next to ours, and uh, we'll see now in uh, practice in practice what happens when uh, another EV driver wants to charge. Nyanya has gone out. Andrew's gone out. Obviously not me, because I don't like to talk to people. I don't even know if this is an EV. Let's see. Looks nice, but I don't know if it's an EV. An EV. <sighs> anyway, subscribe to the channel to give him some money because um, otherwise Ionic will be sold quickly. We have baby here. There she is. Oh, so there we go. There we go. Uh, there we go. Uh, socialization happens. There we go. See, talk, talk, talk. Oh, okay, that's pretty nice. Yeah, it drives a little bit better. Yeah, it goes like Stink Guy 3, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, pretty fast. Yeah. Cool. Alright, cheers, man. What car is this? I like it. It's a Skoda Enyaq. Big, yeah. nice. Yeah, but you, you saw it. Um, you did see one and you said it was ugly. Skoda Enyaq. Oh God. Another car, another grill. I don't know why you like all these cars. Really? Yeah, but um, yeah, they're decent big cars. A lot of people love them. Yeah. See? So that happened, small talk. Uh, I know, but it's... You love it. I, I'm, I'm happy, I'm happy. Yeah, but I, I know but... you are, but you have to be a certain kind of person to love it. A nice, yes. jolly person. And not all people are like that. No. But hopefully, you know, already a person that chooses to buy an electric vehicle is already nicer than... Um, you know, than the normal people, uh, the yeah, maybe, petrol maybe. car. Maybe. You, you decide to buy an EV, you're already conscious of maybe of the planet. Uh, eh? Unless you cannot afford it, fair enough, you're also nice uh, if you can't afford it. So you're definitely nicer than a person that has a Range Rover. Definitely. Because they're rich, but they choose the yeah, shit and most car. Yeah, and most of the time, they, if they're... Even though it's a good car. And most of the time, people with Range Rovers, they don't actually drive off-road or anything. They don't need a 4x4, you know. But generally. I would buy it anyway. Well, I, I love 4x4. I know you would. Anyway, should we stop it there? No, I think... no, no, keep talking. Daddy. Well, I need to pee, actually. I need... I'm dying for a pee, so I'm going to run in. To Morrison's. Yes. All keep right. Keep going. Uh, okay. Maybe I have to see something. <laughs> If I had to travel long distances, at the moment as it is, I wouldn't get an EV. I would get a hybrid that gives me the flexibility to switch to the other, to the petrol, if I need to. Because I can't be bothered to go through all the stress. Oh, check if the charger is empty. Oh, maybe it's broken. Sometimes we got there and it was broken. It wasn't working. You have to plan your uh, trip ahead of time you, with the stops. You have to plan it more around the charging stops than the actual trip. Allora, it's just a lot of hassle. So, what I suggest is, yes, if you are in the city, you don't travel much, eh, buy an EV. But if, or if you have to travel long distance, just rent a petrol car. Because it's just easier. Rent a hybrid, rent a petrol car, because I wouldn't go through the stress 
and hassle that it is at the moment to go long distance with an EV. Like when we went to Italy, to, from, uh, from here, we went to Italy. Allora, maybe I would have liked to go another itinerary, but no. Our itinerary was dictated by the stops of the charging stations. So, for example, we went to bullshit towns uh, and ugly cities that I never would have stopped at because there was a charger. So, uh, that's not right. Sometimes it turns out well. For example, in Italy, we went uh, to um, Agriturismo, which is a and b but nice, with a swimming pool in Tuscany, with all the cypress trees, swimming pool, beautiful countryside. And we just went there because it had a charger. But that turned out to be an amazing um, place. And we went there just because of that. And we keep going there every year. Uh, well, we haven't been for two years because of uh, COVID, but um, that's an amazing place. And I'm going to tell you which one it is. It's called Le Terre Rosse. Agriturismo Le Terre Rosse. And it's amazing. And the food. Oh, they have a restaurant there. That's, I think, one of the best restaurants I've ever been to in this beautiful courtyard at night with the nice lights uh, Tuscan uh, countryside around it uh, amazing food you won't believe it how good it was never you know you don't meet uh, you don't find uh, so many restaurants as good as that so anyway Apart from that, apart from that stop, all the others were a bit crap. But the cities are always a bit without soul, apart, you know. I'm not saying that for all the cities, uh, in, you know, just some of them, uh, they're not worth stopping at. I'm just saying, you will see what I said. And uh, you're free to include it in your video or not. Okay. The moral of the story is uh, don't travel long distance with an EV unless it's a Tesla. No, that's a, not a good moral. We, I did it in the Nero and it was fine. Don't travel then, travel on your own if you just have to do a video about it uh, like uh, Mr. EV. But if you're traveling you with your family Allora, don't do it. What are you talking about? It's not that bad. Eh? This is it's getting, it's get... the moral of my story. Well, you wouldn't personally, but you know, it's not that bad, really. If you do, you know, if you just plan it a bit. Exactly. It takes a bit of planning at the moment. Yes, exactly. But that's at... what I was saying. But but we're at the point. We're at the point where the, all the all the motorway services are the getting planning. upgraded. The planning you have to do it takes you probably but two you, days. We're, but we're not we're not far off all of the motorway services getting upgraded, you know, another year and Again, you'll be and you'll be able and you'll be able to just do it without even thinking. Yeah, yeah, motorway services, but then uh, you're stuck to the highway, to the motorway, and you cannot even explore in the countryside. There was that part of France on the left uh, between France and Germany that we couldn't even step into because there was nothing there. Oh, sorry, you're talking about Europe. Yes. Yeah. But again, in Europe, it's better now than it was. But yeah, I'm just it... saying that at the moment, uh, you're stuck with a certain uh, soulless itinerary that takes you to the motorway and to the big cities. I th it, it certainly, EVs are really good for people that don't mind a bit of planning and... Uh, enjoy all of the all the making itineraries you enjoy making itineraries actually it's just it's just another yes itinerary i don't enjoy me. making itinerary in bullshit uh, towns uh, that uh, look ugly yeah but you can there are uh, there are plenty of places you can stop um, on a scenic route that have like all the little all the little supermarkets i think have chargers don't they in france and things anyway this is so off topic it's ridiculous no it's not off topic we're talking about etiquette no we're talking about everything okay we're talking about etiquette so 
etiquette. Right. If you want to know, if you want to know the etiquette, okay, be mindful of what, how someone else is. Uh, how, uh, what? Be mindful <laughs> of how someone, someone else, else is. is. Yeah, what so, if they're sad? Uh, well, or... yeah, you know, if 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 someone's going ha ha ha, all right, you know, then uh, fair enough, you know, say what what are you charging to, mate? You know, uh, if if, if they're, they're if outside they're the car, if you they're mean, outside uh, the car, or if they or if they're making you know, an effort themselves, you know. But that's just common sense. Uh, I know, but a lot of people don't seem to have that. You know, tapping. But you cannot even teach that. Well, you. Uh, I think you can. I think people need to know. Dealers need to mention it, and uh, that would help. Um, and charge point operators, you know, they need if to put in CCTV see... and good lighting and more yeah. stalls. But if you see a woman in a car at night, who, in their right state of mind, would try and open their door? No, I don't know. That's. I mean, that, yeah. you know, that's not uh, etiquette. No, that's not etiquette. That's probably a way of living. Uh, you haven't been taught anything in yeah. life. No, no, that's crazy. Huh? Yeah. Eh, uh, so. Anyway, um, and, and yes, and if you're a driver, just remember, from 80%, it's very slow. So, going to another charger might make more sense. You'd be quicker, a quicker journey, generally, if you go to another charger. Um, instead what do you mean go to another charger? When because, you're 80% you go to another charger? Yeah, you charge up to 80 uh, and then go to another charger if you if you have a long journey because 80 to 100 is is longer than it would be to get to another charger and charge up there because it's just much quicker at the lower state of charge upwards. So that's just another thing to remember and just be mindful that we're in this weird period where everyone's learning how to get around on these wonderful EVs and um, the infrastructure is not improving at the, the rate of growth, at the same rate of growth as EVs at the moment. But it will, because there's a lot of investment, so it will happen. Did you wear a mask uh, when you peed? Of course, yeah. Why? Uh, haven't they stopped uh, already? Oh, they... oh, let's not get into masks, darling. Yes, no, that's, not, no, that's no, no. where I'm going. No, no, we're not getting into masks now. <laughs> no, let's go, let's go, because we've so charged, tune we're charged in, up. So tune in for the next episode where oh, we talk about COVID and restrictions. Yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> ah, right. Yeah, no, fine. No, no say it, no, say it. Say it. No, not now. Not now. Say it. No, no. no, you said it. Say it. No, no, I was just going to, I wanted to talk about something else, but that's for another video. Anyway, I think we'll stop it now. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Please press subscribe and the bell icon to be notified about the videos, and we'll speak to you very soon. Okay. Yes? Is that all right? Yes. Okay. Bye. Bye.